I'm Steve for This Look With Cars, and today I have a 1966 Mustang GT convertible. As you can see, this is a pretty nice looking car. But unfortunately, this car was being fully restored, and then the owner died. When the owner died over 10 years ago, the car was put into storage where it sat untouched until now. Nobody's sure exactly how far the owner got on the car, but it does look like the owner was fairly close to being able to finish the car. However, with the car sitting for over 10 years, a lot of things are probably going to have to be redone on it. So let's see if I can rescue this beauty and bring it back to life. Let's take a quick look around it. This is a GT, so we have fog lamps up front. It's a 289 cubic inch engine with a little GT badge there. There should be stripes that run along the bottom of the rocker panel here. I did see a stripe kit in one of the boxes. I believe this color is called Tahoe Turquoise Metallic. This car has the pony interior. You can see the little ponies running across the seats there. It has the wood grain dash elements. There are a lot of parts in this car. I think a lot of them are leftover parts. Obviously we need parts for the steering wheel. And these seats are not bolted in at all yet. So even though this car looks complete, I think there's a lot of things that need finished on it. The convertible top frame is here, but there's no top on it at all. You can see the whole trunk is full of boxes as well. On the back, we have the GT filler cap, as well as the GT exhaust tips. And the GTs have the special rear valence panel that the exhaust passes through. Under the hood, it looks pretty complete. Here on the fender, it has a C right there for the VIN number. That indicates that this is the base model 289 with the two barrel carburetor. Luckily, this car was kept in nice storage and besides a few cobwebs. And being covered with a lot of dust, it's in pretty good shape. Looks like the battery was left unhooked. So let's hook up my charger to it, see if it has any voltage and see if it will charge up. Let's see what my battery charger says. Charged at 0%, only shows 1.2 volts. Let's see if it will take a charge. Yeah, the charger kicked off right away. Tried charging it at a small amperage, but it doesn't look like this battery is probably going to be rescued. When you store a battery not charged and you let it go through winters, like I'm sure this one has, it does a lot of damage internally to the batteries. Yeah, even at low current, it's not able to charge this battery. So I'll need to go get a new one. Okay, I just found out something interesting. The old battery has a lip right here and the battery tie down goes over that and holds the battery down. Well, I just went to Napa and all the new 24Fs no longer have the lips on either side. And even the Optima batteries don't have lip adapters for this side. They do for that side, but not on the ends required by these cars. So I read some posts on the internet and people were finding batteries that still had the lips on them at Walmart. But I think those were old stock because it looks like Walmart has now switched to the same style that I'm finding at Napa. And they no longer are selling batteries with this slip here either. That leaves me with not being able to get the correct battery with this car without switching the battery tray and the way that the battery is held down. So for right now, I'm either going to try to rescue this battery, see if I can get it to come back, or I will put a temporary battery in the car just to get it going along a little further until I figure out what to do with this. The battery tie down was a really neat solution for these cars. You have a carriage bolt that passes through this clip that you can put through the hole, slide it over, then you bring it over to the battery and tighten it up. It lets you really quickly change the batteries on these cars. So if I change this to a different style, this will no longer function that way. For now, I'm going to put this on my battery charger and I have this set to the repair setting. We'll see what happens. I'll put a temporary battery in the car and we'll keep on going. Before I connect the battery, I just wanna tap the terminal to the battery, make sure there's no spark. Make sure there's not a short in the wiring somewhere. Seems safe. 
Whenever I'm working on an unknown car, I always leave at least one terminal loose. That way, if there's a problem, you can come in and pull that off real quickly. I guess the next thing is I have a whole pile of keys that was with this car. Need to see if any of these fit the ignition. Oh, look at that. The interior lighting works. I can hear the clock working. You can't see it behind the clock, but I did find a key that works. Let's try to turn it over. That's a good sign. I think now I want to hook up my hot wire box so I can control everything from under the hood. This is my hot wire box and click above if you want to see the video from when I built this. First thing I need to hook up is this ring terminal to where the power goes to the starter solenoid. And then I'll need my alligator clip adapter to adapt from this terminal to connect here. And that's what that looks like. So I'm grabbing power from where the power goes to the solenoid. It'll go through my switch, activating the solenoid, turning the starter. So if we hit the start button, should turn the engine over now, which it does. Now we need ignition. Now for the ignition wire, I'm going to pull this off the coil. That is the positive terminal. And I'll connect my alligator clip to that. Now if I connect my ground wire to somewhere, my light should come on if I turn the ignition on. And we should have spark if we crank it. <laughs> Just to verify that everything is working correctly, I'm going to grab my spark tester, put it here at the coil, make sure that it's actually working. You can see by these wires here that the distributor has been fitted with a Protronics unit, so we shouldn't have to worry about cleaning anything inside the distributor cap. My spark tester is hooked up, and if we have spark, we'll see it flashing right here. So we'll turn the ignition on. Hit our start button. So we do have spark. If we had any fuel, the engine would probably run. Let's get the air cleaner off so that we can see what's going on. I don't hear any fuel pumping right now. Let's try some starter fluid, see if it will fire off for a second. Okay, we have compression, so if we get fuel to it, the engine will run. Let's turn the key on, see what the fuel gauge says. Okay, it went up a little bit. There could be some fuel in there, but it does read E. I'm going to disconnect the fuel line going into the carb so we can determine if we're getting any fuel going up there. This is my handy tool for sliding hoses off of things. There's a hose side and a tube side. Without this tool, this would have been pretty hard to get off. It's completely dry here. There is no fuel. So we have a few things happening. Either there's no fuel in the tank, the pump is broken, or the pump needs primed before it's going to pump any fuel up here. If the problem is there's just no gas in the tank, that will be the easiest fix. But how are we going to see if there's anything in there? Actually, I can get a big whiff of old gas coming out of there, so there may be some fuel in there. I'm gonna take my boroscope, and we'll look in there, see if we see any fuel. It looks like we see the bottom of the tank, doesn't look like there's anything in there. Looks a little bit rusty in there. 
that stuff is probably stuck to the tank. So if I just go get some gas, put it in here, we might get it up to the carburetor. I'm gonna put six gallons in, and we'll see if we can get it up to the engine. The fuel line is still undone here, so the pump won't have to worry about pushing against any pressure. So I'm gonna crank the engine over with the ignition off. We'll see if any fuel comes out here. We're not getting anything yet, but it does have a long distance to travel. Let's try it again. I'm not sure the pump is going to be able to do this on its own. Let's use another pump to get the fuel up to here, and then we can try turning the engine over and seeing if the mechanical pump on the engine works. This is a pump that runs off of the air in your air compressor. I'm going to try to suck the fuel through the mechanical pump and all the way up to here. That will prime the pump for us. And we can also make sure that the lines are free all the way up to here. There we go. You can see the fuel has come up here now. I think I have any of the bad fuel out of the line now. Now let's turn the engine over and see if the mechanical pump pumps any fuel out here. It only made a couple pumps, so I think the mechanical fuel pump on the engine is bad. I'm going to connect up my external fuel tank so we can get some fuel into the carb and see if the engine runs. Turn the fuel on. You can hear the carb filling up. We'll see if the float valve stops it or if it starts overflowing fuel. Sounds like it stopped. See if we can hear the accelerator pump. Accelerator pump's working, it's pumping fuel in. Let's try to start it up. Probably a bunch of stuff on the valves that needs cleaned up. So it's going to be a hard start for this first time. I'm going to use a little bit of starter fluid. Let's try it again. Looked like the fuel pump was starting to work there. Some time has passed and maybe it started to soak up the fuel and starting to work. So I'm going to switch back over to the main fuel tank. Now let's try it again. Looks like we're getting a fuel leak here at the fuel filter. I'll try to tighten that up. Yeah, that wasn't very tight. So they may never have gotten to the process of firing the engine up yet. Let's give it another go. Check for fuel pressure real quick. Our oil 
oil pressure is reading high, so that's a good sign. Let's double check that when we shut the engine off that it actually goes down. The engine's off now. We can see the oil pressure is slowly coming down. Let's look under the car, check for any leaks. I don't see anything. Now we know the engine runs, but this is only one of the major systems on the car. We have the brakes, the transmission, other things that we'll have to test before we really know where we're at on this car. That's going to be it for today. The engine's running, but I have a long way to go on this car. I haven't even touched all the parts that are in the car yet. So let me know if you want to see more videos of this 66 Mustang. And to make sure that you don't miss any, comment below and click subscribe.